Down in the description below, I have a link to my new third channel, Realm of Geekdom, where I'm going to be uploading all of my classic podcasts, along with new episodes coming out very soon, where I'm going to have some crazy interviews, stuff that you've I promise you, you're not expecting. Over there at Realm of Geekdom, the link is down below. Give me a subscription. Check out some of the shows we have on there. And there's tons more to come on that channel. Now, let's get to the video. Welcome to my review of The Mandalorian Season 3. We're going to look at the entire season in a nutshell. And I'm going to give my thoughts on what worked and what did not work. I'm going to start this off just by saying, well, first of all, if you haven't seen Season 3... This will contain spoilers. I'm sure you already knew that, but I want to just be safe. And the first thing I want to get to is unquestionably, unquestionably, this was the weakest of the three seasons without question. Season one had a, a was a very nice breath of fresh air, had a lot of momentum. We got to see a darker, more Western styled Star Wars TV show. First time we actually got a show quite like this in Star Wars, although it had been talked about for a long time. We loved Baby Yoda. We loved uh, Din Djarin before he was even, I didn't even say his name in the first few episodes. We got to meet a bunch of new characters, Grief Karga, uh, Cara Dune, and uh, the series, you know, gave us a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun, very dark, and a good story. Then season two comes along. Season two was almost flawless. But when you look back at season two, now looking back at it, it really feels like season two was meant to be a springboard for other shows. And I think now it was purposely meant to do that. If you remember, they were going to do a show called Rebels of the New Republic or something like that, starring Gina Carano before she got let go. And that's not happening anymore. Or at least I don't think it's happening they might, they might repurpose it, I really don't know, but that was supposed to spring off of season two. There was rumors of a Luke and Grogu show, which that might still happen, although I'm doubting that. The Boba Fett show, Book of Boba Fett, was literally created in The Mandalorian season two, and of course the Ahsoka show. So they basically took that season and used it not just to reintroduce older characters like Boba Fett and Ahsoka, but also to begin the tease for upcoming new live-action Disney Plus Star Wars shows. But the way they did it in Season 2 fit really nicely. Every episode had its own sort of personality. The second episode was the only one I would consider like a weak episode, but it wasn't even that weak. You know, the three-part se season finale was just phenomenal. Like, Season 2 was probably... Not only was Season 2 peak Mandalorian it may have actually been peak Disney Star Wars like think back to all the projects we've gotten since the beginning of Disney Star Wars since The Force Awakens to me this right here season two of Mandalorian was the most consistent it was the most fun it was the best story there were so many cool things they threw in there I really enjoyed season two of The Mandalorian this season though had its fair share of problems, and was definitely a step down. Now, as I must say on these videos, because the internet is a funny place, no, I did not hate this season. But I could tell, even from the first couple of episodes, that something felt off. I can pretty much confirm, if not be very sure of, the fact that Dave Filoni was not as involved in this season as he was in season two. Because he was working on the Ahsoka show and that was like his baby. Jon Favreau was still involved, of course. But this season, somewhere along the way, lost focus. And it felt like the story of Grogu was building up and building up and finally gave us a big payoff at the end of season two. But then what they decided to do, which I think in hindsight was a bad mistake, is conclude that story in another show. There's a lot of people who did not bother with Book of Boba Fett. Some people didn't even know it was going to even reference the Mandalorian. We didn't know until we actually saw him in episode 5, I think, 5 and 6. And nobody knew they were going to actually have Grogu reunite with Din Djarin in that show. Like, that's kind of an important plot point. So people that only watch the Mandalorian or people that saw the first couple of episodes of Boba Fett and were turned off by it and chose not to bother... They didn't even get that moment. And yes, they did recap it at the beginning, 
But I felt like had they built up to that moment happening in The Mandalorian instead of in Book of Boba Fett, that would have made season three not only have a great and important moment, but it would have made the bond between Grogu and Din stronger. So I felt like that was a miscalculation. I think they were trying to do that. And ultimately, they, they wound up sort of not saving Book of Boba Fett, but they were the two best episodes. Ultimately, they tried to do that just to show that there's a shared universe. You know what I mean? Just to kind of remind us that, hey, you know, this is a thing that they're doing. But, or that we're doing. But now, it feels like it was a miscalculation. Because this season started off, to be honest, not all that interesting. You know, it was nowhere near as cool as like the dragon episode on Tatooine that showed Boba Fett that premiered season two. And it definitely wasn't as badass as the first episode of The Mandalorian. So that was a problem. The story was a bit inconsistent, and some of the episodes felt more episodic than serialized. The episode where we were on Coruscant for the majority of it, to me, felt like a big waste of time. Now, again, I'm not saying the episode was really that bad, but besides seeing, like, you know what? It was pretty bad now that I look back on it, dude. Like, we got to see Coruscant. We got to see some stuff that followed up on the clone story with Gideon, but... That was pretty much it. They could have taken that whole episode, condensed it to like maybe a 15, 20 minute segment on another episode, and it would have been probably better than doing that whole episode. Then came the one from Bryce Dallas Howard, uh, which was the episode with Jack Black and Christopher Lloyd. I enjoyed that episode because I love Christopher Lloyd and I love Jack Black, but that episode really does stick out as not belonging in this show. The whole episode was not horrible to me, but it didn't belong in The Mandalorian. It felt like a different show. It felt like I was watching, I don't know, uh, I don't want to say Andor, because I, I couldn't I couldn't get past two episodes of that show. And I'm sorry, but I'm just being honest with you. It was just boring as hell. And I know it got better, but I never got around to seeing it. But um, it just felt like another show. It didn't really feel like The Mandalorian at all. The other reason as to why this season felt... I don't know, a bit amiss is that, well, there's a couple reasons, but I want to get to that. Bo-Katan, bro. So the Mandalorian, and this was set at Disney um, Star Wars Celebration. It's no longer just about Din, at least not this season. Bo-Katan was the main character in many ways. I like that this season was setting up the reclaiming of Mandalore. I really did like that, and we did get it in the season finale, but... Maybe it's just me, but it felt a bit underwhelming. Now, look, I like the season finale. I like the last couple of episodes. I thought they were fine for what they were, and they were awesome to watch in comparison to the rest of the season. But really, dude, it the, recapturing Mandalore was a storyline that had been set up going all the way back to Clone Wars, right? And it should have been a much bigger deal. I do feel like story-wise, they could have hammered the point home of how big of a deal it is that the Empire lost control of Mandalore. Like, that, to me, is a major, major deal, especially in this series called The Mandalorian. In many ways, it was more important here than it was in The Clone Wars. Way more important. And they won, like, you know, they, Moff Gideon quote-unquote died. I don't think he's really dead because nobody ever really... No one's ever really gone, like Luke says, right? But... Dude, like, couldn't they have really hammered the point home? Couldn't they have really, you know, like, made it a bigger deal than it was that Mandalore was recaptured? I don't know. It felt rushed. Like, the last maybe seven or eight minutes of that, of that episode felt rushed. They could have padded it out more. You know, they could have added more things to make it more interesting. Meanwhile, we have other episodes earlier in the season that were too much of nothing. You understand? So, really, it's very disjointed. The Bo-Katan thing, you know, being such an important character this season, it didn't bother me that much, but it definitely felt like the personal story of Mando's journey, like, that we got in the first two seasons, was really put in, on the back burner. Like, it really was. You know, I thought that Mando would be the one to unite Bo-Katan with the other Mandalorians, and that did happen, but it wasn't just him. And it would have been a great moment to kind of etch him in history. Something else about this season too. The writing just felt very 
I don't know, mid. I'm not saying that every episode was poorly written because I enjoyed watching it week to week. But when you look at the season as a whole and compare it to previous seasons, there wasn't much really there. I mean, Grogu pretty much did nothing till the finale. And granted, he's still a baby or whatever that means for that species. And there's not much he could have done, but I felt like the Grogu Din, there weren't enough Grogu and Din moments till the finale. It was almost like he was, and literally he was in the show, in the back seat for most of this show. It's like Grogu took a back seat to Mando, Mando took a back seat to Bo Katan. I didn't think we saw enough of Moff Gideon either. I liked the episode cliffhanger where Moff Gideon was, you know, broken out by Mandalorians, this, that. I liked that. But couldn't they have shown that, like, at the beginning? Like, it would have been better if they showed that at the end of the first episode, right? Like, season three, episode one, oh my god, Moff Gideon is free. Like, that could have been a serious twist to build up to his return later in the season, right? And they didn't do that. That's not what they did. Instead, they just showed him near the end, and then we got him for the last couple of episodes, which the, the stuff with the Shadow Council was great. The stuff with um, just every scene with Moff Gideon screamed like Saturday morning cartoon villain, which to be honest with you, a lot of folks don't like that, but I thought it was fine. He was a good character, and I was hoping to see more of him because he really is like the lead villain of this show, of this specific show. But they're building up Thrawn, so maybe he won't be for the next season. But... Yeah, I mean, I'm, I know it sounds like I'm being hard on it. I'm really not trying to be hard on it. I'm giving you my criticisms. It is an enjoyable show still. I don't hate the show at all. But I felt like it was definitely a step down in story structure, episode structure. It didn't really have like, like I mean, it did have like a show long or a, a season long story recapturing Mandalore. But ultimately, it was a disappointment. Like it was a letdown like that. The way I, env and this could be my fault. But the way that I envisioned the Mandalorians recapturing Mandalore was much more epic than what we saw. And what we saw tried to be pretty epic. And for the stakes of, or for the, the bar set by this season, yeah, it was epic. But I expected so much more. I expected the New Republic to be involved, it to be a big battle, like a really huge, like, space. Like, you know, TIE Fighters and X-Wings, they really go all out here and show the New Republic's issues with, snuffing out the imperial remnant once and for all but it was just the mandalorians which ultimately is not a bad thing but i expected more so this season again i would re-watch this when it comes to like the obi-wan show for example comparing it to that the fights in the obi-wan show and the moments with vader and obi-wan were great that was like the, the peak of the show but i still feel like it wasn't necessary to even do that and I still feel like the story content well, for Obi-Wan was kind of boring, to be honest with you. The, you know, Princess Leia as a kid being captured, like, I wasn't really into that, man. I went, I went over all that in my reviews for that show. But season three of The Mandalorian had a better story. I think it had a better story. So I think it's more rewatchable. I would say the peak is still season two for all of live-action Disney Star Wars and then season one of Mandalorian. I think Boba Fett's at the bottom. I think this is somewhere between Obi-Wan and season one, I would say. I haven't seen all of Andor, so I really can't judge. And we're talking about live action. Like, because I really love Clone War season seven. So, I mean, that's up there. But even that wasn't as good as Mandalorian season two. So, those are my thoughts on season three of The Mandalorian. We're going to go back to basics with season four whenever that comes out. So... I guess we'll talk about it more then. Ahsoka's next coming up this summer, so we'll have more to talk about, and I'll have more Star Wars videos to come here. Subscribe if you are new. Thank you, take care, and I'll see you in the next video.